when you look at homeopathy, it is nothing but nanopharmacology. It produces nanoparticles when you prepare the medicine. When you all might have prepared medicines, must be HMS in pharmacy lab. Triturating medicine to 1 to 99 ratio. It's a classical method which Hanuman discovered. You know, classical method of walled nanoparticles makes to create 30 nanometer size, it takes 36 hours of grinding and milling. But in homeopathic preparation, Hanuman's preparation, in 6 hours, 6 hectares, you will find particles smaller than 30 nanometers. So, Hanuman's method of preparation is something which is very, very unique. And this method of preparation made homeopathy as a very individualistic science. So, these all are my publications. And nano science, I told you, it is one, your nano is one by billionth of a meter. It is 10 Armstrong. And that is the size of a nano. But why is this nano is so important? These are some of the pictures I am going to show you. This is Arsenic album 200. And the size of nanoparticle is 5 to 71 nanometer. And these are the particles you are seeing. And you can see arsenic is 1.17. Why you see copper and the other material? Because copper is the grid we are using with the carbon. So naturally that elements will come inside. So arsenic nanoparticle in 200 potency is only 5 nanometer to 10 or 20 nanometer size. And the COVID time, COVID time there was a lot of controversy about arsenic. Because government of India proposed arsenic. And World Health Organization got angry. And medical associations got angry. And so called scientific community got angry. They said arsenic is poison. And arsenic is a very dangerous material. It should never be used. In one point. And another point they say it is 200 dilution. There is no material. The same opposite contradictory statement made by the medical fraternity at that time. But our hobby, this study was done in 2014. A book was published in 2015. But nobody cared about it. It is the mistake of our person. And there, the size of a COVID virus is 130 nanometer, whereas size of an arsenic nanoparticle is 5 or 10 or 15 nanometers. And one drop of arsenic contains millions of nanoparticles. So it can directly interact with the virus or directly attach with the virus because this is an electropositive one, virus is an electronegative one. So they may directly interact or they may interact through the genetic motivation of the arsenic. Arsenic can act more than 200 or 300 genes and it acts immediately. The moment you put a drug on your tongue, your genes get activated. It is like a switch you are on in the light. The light will get on on the same moment. Will it take a time? No. And that is a mode of action. That is why homeopathy acts very faster. This is the image of Aura Metallicum 200. You can see all these pictures in this book. This is 5 to 125 nanometer size. And you can see in the right side there are some white spots, and these spots are the specific atoms. Because this is a 10 nanometer scale. And this is uh, Aura Metallicum. You see the nanoparticles of every drug is different. They are not uniform, they are not same. Their morphology, their size, their charges, everything. That is why they are individual. And they are images of myelum. See, the pictures are entirely different. This is 20 nanometer and 50 nanometer size. And the size of iodum is 2.8 nanometer to 9.03 nanometer. Unbelievably smaller. And the peculiarity of these nanoparticles are they can directly penetrate into the cell wall. It can go through the cytoplasm. Without any barrier, it goes through the nuclear wall and enter the DNA. And they have DNA specific. They go to the specific gene in the DNA. And this is something very, very interesting. You know what is specificity? Specificity is something which you find in the virus or in bacteria. If you have polio virus in your body, where it goes and it is Why it is not going into liver or lungs or brain? There is no answer. Answer is this virus has a specificity. Similarly, each and every nanoparticles of a drug has specificity. Specificity to specific genes. And it acts only on that gene. It won't act in every gene in the body. And there is specificity. 
And why the specificity, I don't know. You can go and find out. There are so many things to find in this. And this specificity makes homeopathic drugs acting on simile or simile vascular Why this specificity is important? Because when you prove a drug, any of the passengers here have proved any drug in your body? Did any of you prove any drug? It's bad. It's really bad. If you want to feel what is homeopathy, start doing drug proving I remember Dr. Shastri and did you do drug, drug proving at that time? At one drug. One drug they all proved. There is a proving protocol, we can do that, you can definitely sign sentences. Why they produce sign sentences when you take a 30 drug for 3 days or 4 days? That produces transient epigenetic changes. You have to read genetics again, I will tell you. If you are serious about it, go back, take the guidance from library, there is a small chapter of genetics. And you take that book and read it, then you understand exactly what I said. Whatever you learn genetics in first BHMS is only for writing an exam, I know. Everybody does that. But now you go back to library, take guidance and read genetics. Then you understand what the dimensions of homeopathy is. It is much, much bigger than what you think. So here, I don't you can see the pictures. See natromode. Particles are so small, 0.65 to 1.15 nanometer. Natromode is such a constitutional drug, you cure mental and physical diseases, how many? Because natromode may act on 500 or 1000 genes. And it it, it acts, it goes so deep because it is so small. Our perception problem is, we always think body in a material level, medicine in a material level. That is why modern medicine gives medicine how many milligrams per kilogram body weight to alter the physiological function. And people think that is medicine, scientific medicine. That is unscientific medicine. Because to work in the genes, you don't need milligrams, you don't need grams, you need only nanograms. Even you don't need nanograms, you need just to do the stimulation for the genes. Even a single particle may be enough. That is why you get magical result many times when you practice only. And that magical result, if you can make it common, then the science will become different. And that is where the science comes. That is where the science comes. Our limited knowledge is the problem when you are prescribing a drug. Because we have limitations. But if you integrate modern technology of artificial intelligence into the genetics and nanotechnology and drug proving of homeopathy, then the science will become different. It will be like a crypto coin. One dollar will become thirty-five thousand dollars within five years. That is what you are holding in your hand. So this is the size of Nakamura LF24. This is the image of platinum at 200 feet. You can see there are more lines here. Did you see that lines? This is a 5, 2 nanometer magnification, 2 nanometer magnification, 2 nanometer scale bar of electron microscope. And there you find there are finest lines. And these lines are the atomic arrangement. This one line is a linear arrangement of atoms of platinum. Second line is another arrangement of, and they have a specific distance for every element between the arrangements of atomic arrangements. There is a specific space, which is called the D space. And we measure this D space and we understand what is the element exactly. This is the finest physics. And here the D space you can see, it is rarely you get in electron microscopy. Because I have done hundreds of samples and I prepared samples for almost only 10 years plus myself. When I prepare sample it is so precise. And when you prepare sample so precisely you get this type of observation to the electron uh, microscope. And it needs a lot of hill formation in this process. <laughs> and platinum, again you can see there is a selected area electron diffraction. And this round picture you are seeing, this is the platinum and this crystal formation, nanoparticles. 
and this measurement when you measure this space between this uh, different rings you understand what is the correct element in that and that is the way we realize it is platinum dioxide and platinum dioxide in homeopathic dilution is a very revolutionary discovery one thing is it utilizes the complete toxic effect of platinum number two is platinum is getting oxidized which is another wonder it usually don't happen in that but there is platinum oxide you can make it but this is something which happens in the homeopathic dilution this is the dynamic light scattering image of platinum 200 meter <coughs> and the size of particle is between less than 10 nanometer 7 to 8 nanometer so in different methods we did experiments with the same sample and the results or observations are given here and this is silicon 16 and silicon 16 two nanometer itself you can see the despacing the atomic arrangement and there when you go to the other image of calcare carb one you see the particles are entirely different calcium carbonate and this is the carbo animalis that is seen field emission scanning electron microscope the difference is in transmission electron microscope the electrons pass through the substrate and the measurement will be taken and when it pass through the atoms inside absorb the energy and the electrons will jump into the outer layer then a source of energy will be coming out and this energy which will be measured captured and measured so you will know exactly what is the element this is what is used in the case of uh, x-ray spectroscopy which we are using to analyze the content but in field emission scanning electron microscope they are organic material if you take like a podium if you pass through the electrons it will get burned so this is called the scanning the outer space will be scanned so material will not usually get burned sometimes it happens and with that scanning also you will get the energy levels and this energy levels will tell you what is the element in it and in all organic material you will find there are three elements in carbon hydrogen carbon oxygen and sodium sodium is not there carbon hydrogen and oxygen hydrogen rarely comes carbon and oxygen are the common thing this is hydrogen of tenium carbon oxygen silicon has come sodium has some extra in that silicon may be because of heating happens within the body because bottles are made of This is lycopodium. You can see lycopodium LF24, the size of particles like bricks. And this is such a small area. In a such a small area, you are seeing hundreds of particles. So if you look at the quantity of nanomaterial in one drop of homeopathic dilution, you can't sleep, I'll tell you. Because the magic in your hand is something more than what you can imagine. We practice without knowing all these things. and you practice after knowing all these things your practice will become more perfect this is naxomedia cm potency it will say nothing in the inside this is a pure alcohol i have i have prepared alcohol sensible scale from 0 to 30c and in no dilution there is no part all the dilutions are empty of any part that means you need to add a So solute into a solvent to have nanoparticles. So the progress of research in homeopathy, Hanuman's observations. He said it is dynamic because he fertilized medicine beyond that. Therefore, there was no particle. So he said there is no particle. It must be acting in the dynamic plane. When it is acting in the dynamic plane, he has to introduce vital force into there. And that is what we are sitting and learning even today. but it promoted homeopathy propagated homeopathy and sustained homeopathy but that's not enough to grow homeopathy into the next century you need something different but you have a precise science in your hand and 1988 when wisse has suggested water memory he thought water is retaining the memory of the drug again in clinical hypothesis proposed in 2007 they thought the when you fertilize the bottle produces silica and natural particles of silica is cured But silica cannot cure every disease. And discovery of nanoparticles in all potencies plus gene regulation. 2010 onwards, there are more than 100 papers published in gene regulatory mechanism of homeopathy. And the recent paper, you can get it free, or I will send it to you. 
that is Paulo Bellavich's paper and there it is mentioned uh, he studied, he has read many studies and Buddha Bhaksh did lot of studies and Paulo Bellavich's recent study, uh, he did study on Jalsimia some years ago and he found around 112 genes are related. Now the recent study is on Drusira. Drusira is more than 100 genes are related. So in every homeopathic dilution, there is a gene regulatory mechanism is hidden inside. And water memory is when you find nanoparticles and original matter inside which has a capacity to alter the genetic modulation, water memory stands nullified. Water <coughs> memory is because of the memory of NPs in that nanoparticles within the liquid which you have. But even today when I speak in Europe, many of the researchers they can't digest it. They say, how is it possible? I say, how is it possible is not a problem. Science is an evolution. Nobody knew about electron microscope till 1939 because electron microscope after it came only atoms have, electrons have seen or atoms have seen. But electron microscopes have evolved after 2000. To the extent that you can find a single atom under a electron microscope. I have seen when I was studying atom of 0 about 24 lot of particles, so small, 1 to 3 nanometer, when energy we pass through that, electrons are passed through that, these atoms will start jumping and dancing, like a dancing moon. Because energy level, you are going to energy level. And homeopathy acting in energy level, but with a nano scale. <coughs> and maybe something beyond that, we don't know. More a mechanical advancement may tell us in future what is more in it. So the current reality of medical science is because you, we are homeopathy learning half of allopathy only because modern medicine or the syllabus of our, ours is closely integrated with anatomy, physiology, pathology, micro, medicine, microbiology and medicine of modern science itself. Therefore, we know what it is. So we learn about virtual cellular pathology and the microbiology, bacteriology and organisms produce damage to the cells and bacteria are the cause of the, one of the major cause of infections and uh, antibiotics discovered in 1929, penicillin is good enough to kill. So killing bacteria, killing organism become a normal routine in science. Or physical, you know the fundamental pharmacology of modern medicine is based on physiological changes. Modify the physiology, control the physiology, inhibit the physiological function. So it is in the physiological and biochemical level. It never gone to genetic level because genetics was discovered first in 1953. DNA was first discovered by 1953 by Watson Institute. Antibiotics was discovered in 1950. Microbiology was discovered in 1890s, 1880s. So the current modern medicine is, is not a post DNA medicine, it is a pre genetic medicine. So it never ever have anything to do with gene regulation. But to our surprise, homeopathic drugs have everything to do with gene regulation. That is why we cure lot of patients many a time. But we are not taking the credit for that and you should start taking the credit for your treatment and cure. And here Epigenetics and nanopharmacology of homeopathic drugs is going to redefine the science of medicine in the years to come. Why it is so important? In 1960s, Richard Feynman, he was a Nobel Prize winning physicist, during his speech in American Physics Society, declared that to know about nanotechnology, you go to human body. And human body is composed of nano structures. You take the lung, you go to alveolar level, every alveoli is a nanostructure. You go to the liver, every upper cell is a nanostructure. Go to the blood, the hemoglobin is carrying the oxygen and taking the carbon dioxide back it is nothing but a nano device. This is he visualized in 19. And he only started the concept of nanotechnology and its implication in medicine. And here you can see that fundamentals of human organic structure is controlled by nanometrophil. RNA is a DNA. RNA and DNA are nanostructures. 
hormones, enzymes, receptors, antigens, antibodies, everything in our body is collection of nanostructures. They work in a comprehensive way. And that makes it purely a nano and human organism with 70 kilograms or 80 kilograms weight with 100 million cells in the body is a nanostructure. So our drugs are going deep into this nano level. Whereas modern medicine drugs are going into the cellular level and it is into the fluid level and the physiological level and alter the physiology. That is why we give 20 units of insulin to control the sugar. What it does? It substitutes the insulin. And tomorrow morning if you don't take this substitution, your sugar will definitely shoot up. And this is a medicine with a conceptually different thing. Whereas even if we treat a diabetic patient in the beginning, sometimes we will get complete cure. You give acid force, you give lycopodium, you give acid salt, you give felonious or any drug, 30 or 200 potency, we get occasional cures. Why there is a cure? If there is one cure, there is a reason for that. And we are unable to look, you know, take out the reason from that. Because the science which we learned, the science which is there was incapable of explaining the drug action of homeopathy. But now we know the mechanism to explain the drug action. So how complex is our genetic system? We should know about it. We have around 80 to 100 trillion cells in our body. And the DNA of our every nucleus, every cell has a nucleus and every cell nucleus of this 100 trillion cells has same set of DNA. That you should know very clearly. Your neuronal cell or cell from a kidney or liver or skin, you take and examine, it contains a nucleus and in the nucleus, same set of 30,000 genes are there. Then how it works differently? Because of gene regulatory mechanism. When you are in the uterus, when your eyes are forming and heart is forming, liver is forming, the same set of DNA is everywhere. But you have a switch on switch off mechanism. And where in the liver, which cell is, pluripotent stem cell is going to develop as a liver, liver function, liver structure. In that cell, the genes which are programmed for developing the anatomy and physiology of the liver is switched off. The remaining 29,000 or 29,500 genes are kept switched off. And in the heart, same thing happens. The kidney same thing happens. And we are working in this switch on the time. One of my friends from Hyderabad, she said some years back, she had a girl 24 years. Mother brought her to the doctor and uh, she had never uh, 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 attained the menarche. So mother was worried and brought the girl and they went to gynecologist first and they found the uterus is not developed. There is no uterus. In the instead of uterus, there is a one centimeter small structure which is like just uh, without any uterine characters or without any ovaries, nothing. And she said, I can't do anything. And this patient said, mother said, nobody can do anything. That's why I came to you. You do something. You do something. That's it. We are not expecting anything. So she, as a homeopath, she decided to give Cifilin of tandem single dose. One or two doses, I don't remember, she told me clearly, she presented over. Two doses of cifilin of tandem given and gave plus four. To her surprise, after eight months, this girl started their period. Then they went to ultrasound and they found the uterus is fully evolved. And nobody could explain. She couldn't explain. She was asking why, why, how, what happened. Now we have a clear answer for that. The genes which were supposed to evolve into as a complete functional, structural ovaries and uterus were switched off in the initial phase. It was switched on when she gave a single dose of. So the whole structure evolved. I have treated some cases of congenital anomalies within the uterus. I never expected them to get worse. To my surprise, some problem related to kidney was completely resolved without it. Then I really understood 
what the madam reported was 100% true. It is an absolute fact. Why it is happening? Because your drugs do the generation in the field. If you know that, you will explain many cures which you have seen in your office. Many cures you have seen in your clinic. So this DNA of every cell has two meters. If you, if you stress the DNA of a human being in every cell, you have around 1800 trillion cells and you have a two meter DNA, almost the same length of a person is folded and kept in the every cell and that controls. It is more than 20 billion kilometers, more than the size of the diameter of solar system. This is a complex structure we are holding, you understand that? And we are physicians sitting in the, cha the chamber and thinking I am a surgeon, I know everything, I am a cardiologist, I know everything. The ego of the doctor is far bigger than one cell. <laughs> and that is a very, very bad thing. Our knowledge about human being, human body, human structure, human genetics is very, very primitive. Even with knowing so many things, our knowledge about genetics and DNA is less than 2%. That means, I told you the possibility, your cryptocurrency in your hand is $1 today. After 10 or 15 years or even after 10 years, it can be, instead of 35,000, it can be a million dollars. So this $1 can convert to a million dollars if you have sufficient intelligence you are using for that. And this is a cell you know. And here the genetic control. Genetics, the DNA, RNA, and protein formation. This is where protein to the works. And this is where conventional allopathic. Is it clear for you? If it is clear for you, you understand what you are doing. And why you are curing patients, which is not or inexplicable for allopathic process. They say, how is it possible? No, it is not possible. Because as per science it is like that. As per science. What is the science? Science of today is what we know today. But people pretend that they know everything. There are two people, two types of variety of people in the world that are the most dangerous, pretending they know everything. One is the community of priests. Community of priests think they know everything about God. And poor people like us also think they know everything about God. And with that they cheat everyone in Second is doctors. And that is why there is a idiom came, doctors are the second doctors. That is another biggest cheating community in the world. Because with little knowledge, we try to pretend as if we know everything about it. It is like the psychologist many a time putting a small beard and pretending as if they know a very bad type they can read. This is something very funny we should know. It is a very, you know, interaction I am telling you. So this is what homeopathy is. This is what Virchow's medicine is. This is what conventional modern medicine is. And this is going to vanish as a treatment method from the world within one decade. And there is something which is a big revolution is going to happen. Because scientifically in different angles and different corners, the actions are already going on. And one day it will come out, it's like a revolution. And that revolution will change everything in the history of medicine and knowledge of human beings. So this is what genetic control of cell function means which leads to the structure, function, enzymes, chemistry, chemical stability and each gene which has a DNA control the formation of RNA and RNA spread through the cell and control the formation of specific protein. And the gene expression, the entire process from transcription of genetic code in nucleus to transliteration of the RNA code and formation of proteins in the cell cytoplasm, these all three stages together called gene expression. And we are activating all these three levels of gene expression. Whereas modern medicine has zero, zero capability to enter into any of these layers of gene expression. If any of their drug is trying to go to the genetic level, they are all genotoxic. And that is a history says very well. So many kids are born without 
limbs after the use of thyroidotomy, 1960s. Even today, some of them are in a shop. Whereas homeopathic dilutions are consistently provided support to the positive gene regulation. That is why the difference between when you treat a patient with viral or bacterial infection with a homeopathic drug, Naxomic embryony or arsenic, or you treat with initially antibiotics, later with a few doses of steroid, the qualitative difference is every time you treat with homeopathy, the immune system will get activated. Every time you treat with antibiotics and steroid, immune system will get so if you take two, three generations antibiotics, then your immune system will be definitely compromised to such an extent that no antibiotics will perform. And not only that, you will be prone to hundreds of infections. So the possibility of pandemic once in hundred years, always in human history, once in hundred years, there was a serious pandemic and a large population died. Now, the possibility of pandemic once in 100 years will be reduced to once in 50 years, once in 30 years, once in 10 years because systematically our immune system is getting compromised. So allopathic system in the last 100 years built the biggest empire of health in the world but it did compromise on the human genetic immunosystem and that is going to be the biggest compromise in human history. So these 20,000 different genes form structural proteins, organelles and different chemical reactions within the cell. And this is what cell is, you know very well about it. A comparison of different cells, virus 15 nanometers, the smallest one, and 150 large viruses. And these are the same thing. Whereas homeopathic dilutions and nanoparticles are average less than 10 nanometers. The smallest you can understand. You don't need milligram, kilogram weights of medicine for treating a patient. You need nanogram and less than nanogram. This is what is epigenetics. DNA methylation, histone modification, they involved in the chromatin remodeling. Epigenetic changes are potentially reversible and by a number of small molecules called epi drugs. Nowadays we call it epi drugs. And every homeopathy drug is a epi drug. They make epigenetic modification. Reversible modification. Epigenetic modifications are reversible modifications. So homeopathy is evolving as an advanced and post-modern medicine. Cure the disease by the most subtle impact on individual gene regulation. Why we are individualistic? Because the genetics of each individual is individualistic. And this individualistic 700 crores people 80-90% of your DNA coding may be almost common for the structure and function formation. But the remaining are highly individual. So in the modern medicine, the, the business is very easy because if you make one molecule which changes the cholesterol level or changes the insulin level or thyroid hormone level, you can sell for 700 more <coughs> people around the world. But for a homeopath, the problem is you can sell one to only one person in this world. So the commercial viability of homeopathy is always less. But that is what the end of the day will sustain. You cannot treat everybody with the same medicine ever. It is impossible. And homeopathy is evolving as a personalized medicine. It was a personalized medicine. It is a personalized medicine. It will be a personalized medicine. But this personalized medicine which we practice on the basis of signs and symptoms are going to be modified into a personalized medicine practiced at the DNA, at the genetic level. So the level will change but the practice is going to be the same because the drugs have specific gene affinity and modification. So evolving future medicine is based on three things, genetics, nanoscience and artificial intelligence. And here, genetic side, homeopathy is far advanced as far as our drugs are concerned. Nanoscience, homeopathy has developed a completely full-fledged system for that. So many dots are there, you need to connect all the dots together. And that is what is expected from you all right in years to come. 
So I was telling in the morning session, we all practice in 2000, 2010, 2020, maybe 2030. But you practice start on 2030, then you practice on 40, 50, 60, 70. So your time is only coming. And the science is going to evolve like this. If you run in front, you will be the front runner. If you still go with the 18th century principles, you will sit in the 18th century. You will get fossilized. So don't get fossils yourself. So homeopathy has a great role to play in this level. So this is about molecular biology and genetics. I will show you a few slides. There are so many purposes you can search for Dr. Kudabak. She is a pioneer in the area of genetic research in homeopathy. He started working in 2000 itself, published around 30, 40 papers on this, and he is very aged now. I talked to him last week also. His health is not good. And this is what orthodox chemotherapeutic drugs do. This is all basic research they did to understand what homeopathy does. You can see here, his study says in 2011, this is an animal. And this is normal. This is a carcinogen treated with the tumors, malignant tumors in the mice. And he is succussed alcohol treated, that means placebo treated animal, succussed alcohol. This is CK alcohol treated And the tumors disappear. And he said specifically about the epigenetic changes which happens in this study. And these are the results. There are specific genes, upregulation and downregulation, he has mentioned. Following proteins are downregulated in the red line and the green line upregulated. And this gene regulation is what is modifying the DNA and curing the patient. And this is an extreme, extreme sensitive gene expression in human SY5Y neuroscience to ultra low doses of gelatinium. You can see around 111 genes are modified. And polytrusts modify large number of genes. That is why we call the polytrusts. You take Pulsatilla, Nexomica, Calcarica, Lycopodium. Lycopodium nobody studies. If you study Lycopodium, you may find 400 piles and genes are getting modified. And this is the final gene modulation, modulation which is there with the graph. We have no sound here. So I have a, actually I had one video, one minute video, but our, I don't know whether we can connect to the sound how the DNA acts in our uh, nuclear system. DNA is always in motion. And how the DNA is getting modified. How the mutation happens. Mutation happens both internally and externally. Some of the rays when it passes through your body, it gets mutated because the chain will cut. And there is an automatic repairing mechanism in the DNA. And naturally 99.9% .9 will get automatically repaired. But there are occasions it will not get repaired. That is what is called the mutation. And this mutation leads to cancer. And mutation leads to the cells to produce uncontrolled cell formation. So this video is maybe difficult to play for us, so let us look into the other one. So I am going to finish it now. This is conventional biomolecular medicine. It's a very, very important scientific advancement of the 19th century. And there the life saving measures have evolved tremendously because it started evolving with the Second World War. And there the life of the soldier, life of the civilians during the war, life saving was the most important thing. And antibiotics was the final crowd which helped antibiotics, allopathy to modern medicine evolve to such an extent because in the second world war period at least millions of soldiers were saved only because of medicine. And that is why it gave an invincibility in the medical science. And that invincibility is slowly washing away now because it is not a proper scientifically, genetically acceptable method of treatment. 
and it is failed in all chronic diseases. Not even a single drug is discovered after 1990 in modern medicine. Last 30 years, the last drug discovered was for the drug which they got the Nobel Prize for that, that is for the bacteria inside the gut which produces the ulcer. H. pylori and ran into it was the last drug discovered. And they made billions and billions of dollars from that and they don't made anything out of that new drug. And another important drug they discovered in 1986, 88, 89 was Lipitor, that is atherostatin. Statin is to control the, the cholesterol. And they saw that in 2020, 2014, by the time the patent time is over, Present by time is over, they sold 1.7 trillion dollars of statin. 1.7 trillion dollars, 2014. It was bigger than Indian economy at that time. So the strength of modern medicine is not in the scientific background of the modern medicine, but the strength of modern medicine is on the economic background of modern medicine. That used to be very clear. If you are afraid of that, you have to be careful. You don't need to be afraid of that. Because science will change everything. Science is proof. Science is not uh, economy related, science is related to truth. So if you touch on truth, you will succeed. And next is, it fails in the cure of chronic diseases, originating from complex genetic system. And nanoscale medicinal agents to act. We don't need anti-diabetic, we don't need anti-hypertensive, anti-allergic, anti-tumor. Everything is a commercial purpose to drug introduced. You have to take life long. Any drug you take, anti-diabetic, anti-hypertensive, anti-allergic, what it means? 24 hours it works. Then you have to go again. And if you cure a patient of that completely, they say it is not science. Am I right? They say it is not science. 24 hours it works, next day you have to buy and eat again and every day you pay for them. That is a perfect sign. So, don't believe it. It is not a science at all. As far as the mechanism is concerned, the treatment strategies in the emergencies are concerned, modern medicine is modern. I have no doubt about that. But look at the chronic ailments related to genetics, related to immunity. Modern medicine is dangerous, complicated, outdated, killing the immunity. It should be, it, we should get rid of that in another 10 to 20 years, Other, otherwise the genetic existence of humanity will be reduced, injuries, everything. This is a very dangerous situation we are in. So the existential reality is knowledge is going to develop from gross matter to the subtle level. And we are in the most subtle part of the treatment of this. That is for me. Ayurveda has definitely a part in it, but not to the extent of homeopathy which has. So the biological existence of human being is defined in the Cartesian model. By the modern medicine, the mind and body are separate entities. You treat mind and body separately and each organ separately. This is what Cartesian philosophy says. And in the last 400 years, it is what evolved as modern medicine. And this is against the holism. And we are holistic. But at the same time, we were unable to explain what exactly holism was. Now we are in a position to say what holism we are practicing because we are practicing integrating mind and body. We are integrating the genetics into the immune system and we are treating patients to improve their immunity, not to degrade the immunity of patients every time when you prescribe it. So this is something very important. So DNA coding is the basis of growth, health, disease as well as the death. When the DNA integrity goes in 70, 80 or 90 years, the telomeres, telomeres will get loosened. Our integrity will go, we get aged and we die. It is natural. So we don't want to live like ever. It is unworthy. If you think of living 150 years, it is worthless. Because the world will change so fast and you will be like an old pharaoh. He is still there in the tomb of Egypt. If somebody wanted to live like that, it is fine. But I don't think it is a good idea to pass. So this present research in the last 13 years proved beyond doubt that homeopathy is truly a personalized nanomedicine. 
I have published a paper in Hindi Journal in 2019. You can see that paper. Uh, your journal, you have all the journals here. You go to library and search it of A.S. Rajendran. You can find in uh, Google Scholar itself for this purpose. Go to British Journal, Homeopathy Journal, and you can find Homeopathy seen as personalized animals. And that paper I have written so clearly about all these things. If you read that paper after today's speech, it will help you to understand so clearly about many things. And it is a time for us to realize the homeopathic individualization of a patient is a way to sketch the genetic blueprint of a person using individual expressions of science and system. This is something very unique you should understand. When you get a characteristic from one patient, you are indirectly understanding some gene is getting to it. Because every expression of a human being is being controlled by the genetic Your behavior, we have drugs with a body pattern, is it not? It is given in a phosphorus, it is given in Silesia. The patient is like a figure, a picture. And that picture is coming because there is a definite gene pattern behind that. And it works better in such a constitution. Calcarea car works better in fatty, fair and flabby constitution. This fatty, fair and flabby constitution is because the genes are working like that. Otherwise, why as one person is lean and thin and another person is fatty? This is simply a gene organizing mechanism. So we are within genetics from the day one Hanuman discovered for me. We are in nanomedicine the day Hanuman started fertilizing for me. That is in 18th We started treating genetics specifically when Hanuman discovered chronic disease. Hanuman did a lot and we did nothing to make it revolutionized. So it is a time to realize that homeopathic nanopharmacology is genetic, genetic modulation in curing disease. Do the same genetic modulation during the drug proving also. It is a complete system. But what I said, we were all in single drug, but in the years to come, we may go not in one drug. Maybe for 20 gene, 20 gene aberration you give one drug, another 30 gene aberration you may give another drug. This is the way things are going to evolve. There is no doubt about that. I am involved in some genetic research now. Another two years I hope, if everything okay, papers will get published and you can read the papers. But I am suggesting, even don't wait for that, you can start your own work in a 